I literally just knocked my fucking computer off the goddamn desk. <laughs> Good start to the episode. Hi, friends. So this week, I'm going to give you all my tips for how to not get attached to people so fast. Because my Pisces ass, please, I used to get attached to people like that. Like, it was so annoying how quick I would, like, plan my future with someone. <laughs> like, I'd meet them. I would see them across the room and be like, boom, we're dating. We're married. I found the one. Like, I used to get so attached to people so goddamn quick. And I would hurt my own feelings a lot because I would, like, get excited by a situation or get excited by a person. And then it wouldn't work, you know? So I'm going to give you all my tips on how to not get attached so quick. Because a lot of you guys deal with that. And a lot of you guys have written in and asked me to cover this. So I'm going to do it. But I have a little announcement to make. I made a Facebook community for all of us. So I made a page on Facebook. It's like a Facebook group where all of you guys can join it. It's going to be free. But all of you guys can join it. And it's going to be a private group. So anything you post in there or I post in there, it's like only for the group to see. But I wanted to make a little community so that you guys could go in and like talk to each other, make some friends, one. But two, if you ever need advice on something or you just want to like get another opinion on a situation that you're going through from someone who's not in it and from someone who fucking gets it. Because if you listen to this podcast and you like me, your brain just works right, babe. Love you for it. <laughs> but I made the Facebook group so that you guys could go in and talk to each other. So if you have a situation or you want advice on something, go in and post in the Facebook group and like comment back to each other. Shoot shit back and forth, like give your two cents, help people out with their situations. And like when you're going through something, feel free to go in there and vent and like get advice. It's like we all get it and we can all be there for each other. I'll go in and I'll be like commenting back and shit too. And I wanted to give you guys a sense of belonging and feel like you have somewhere you can go and someone you can talk to at all times because there's a lot of you guys that watch this and follow me. So I wanted to give us all a space where we can like belong and like be friends. <laughs> So I'll put the link to where you can join the Facebook community in the description of this podcast. Just click the link. It's going to be on Facebook. I know we don't like Facebook. Facebook's kind of weird. But I feel like this is the best place to do it because it's easy. I don't want to make a fucking Discord. I like guess it's too goddamn difficult. Like a little chat room. No, this is not fucking kick. <laughs> so the Facebook group just makes it easy. But I'm really excited about it. And I hope you guys are too. So go join as soon as you see this. And start posting, bitch. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to post in there. Don't be scared to comment back. It's a safe goddamn space. And if I see a little fucking rat in there running their mouth or being rude, I'm booting you the fuck out. It's a privilege to be in our little community. So be polite. Check each other politely when you need to be checked. Like if someone puts a situation where they're the asshole, politely let them know. But if someone's in there just talking shit or dogging you, I'm going to boot them the fuck out. I'm not playing no bullying shit. And most likely we're going to bully them back because it's our community. We can do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> But like I said, don't be scared to post in there. Don't be scared to be vulnerable because it's just a community of people who fucking get it. Like we're all there for each other. We all understand our emotions. We understand how to be there for each other. We all know how to comfort people. We all listen to this. Like all of you have like an advanced level of awareness. So I want to make a little place where we can all hang out. So the link is in the description to join it. Go fucking join it. Thank you so much. And post in there. Shoot shit. Make some friends. Talk to some people and give some advice. I love that. And I'll be in there too, like I said. I'll be watching you, okay? I'm going to be watching for these little motherfuckers that want to bully people that I care about because you're done for. But anyway, let's jump into how to not get attached to people so quickly because I've got you. I've got a list of tips and some situations and some things and I'm going to have to be vulnerable and share some of my personal shit, but I'm going to do it because it's going to benefit you. It's going to embarrass the fuck out of me, but it's going to benefit you, so I'll share it. So with not getting attached to people too fast, it's totally normal to get excited by someone new, whether it's a friend or like someone you're interested in to date. It's totally normal to be excited about it and be like, oh my God, like you're going to feel a lot of things. And my punk ass used to take it too fucking far. Like I said, like I would be attached to you immediately. And then I would feel like a sense of betrayal when someone didn't like me back or they didn't like live up to the image I just like made up in my head of them and like what we could be. Like I would hurt my own fucking feelings all the time. Like I'd feel betrayed. Like how did you not like me this much? Like we were supposed to be together. <laughs> like as soon as I decide that I like you, whether I told you or not, I don't want you talking to nobody else. Not a single soul, bitch. Don't look at nobody but me. Don't talk to nobody but me. You better only love me. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, but like I'm kind of not. Like, I still am very, like, territorial. And, like, if I like you, I'm going to get upset by every fucking thing you do. But these are my ways to kind of, like, knock this out. So my first two little tips. The first one is be realistic. What is the situation at hand? Like, what is going on right now? Like, let's say I just met some person. And I, like, feel all these things about them. 
And I'm like, oh my God, they could be the one. Like, you know how your brain just kind of like flips into like overdrive and starts convincing you of all this shit and makes things bigger than it is? This is gonna help you stop that and like reel it the fuck back in because don't go too far. You're gonna hurt your own feelings like I do, okay? <laughs> just trust me. Get realistic about what the situation is at hand. So let's say you meet someone and you're super attracted to them, you're super interested in them, you feel very drawn to them, you like them, you're obsessed with them, ah, because that's how I get. Like I will be obsessed with someone in like 10 seconds, I would say five, but uh, 10 seconds, it takes me to know if I'm obsessed with you or not. And I have a weird thing where like I can feel people. I don't know how to explain it, but like I can just feel someone's heart. I don't know if it's their energy, I don't know if it's their heart, but I know intentions and I can feel it. Like I can feel who people are at the core. And it's like, if I look into someone's face, I can see like the wall and then I can see what's behind it. Like I see people for who they are and it scares the fuck out of people. Like my friends, when we have like deep conversations and any of the people that I coach one-on-one, -on -one, like they understand I just know shit I'm not supposed to know. <laughs> and I see things I'm not supposed to see. Like my friend Randy and me had a talk the other night and I was like looking in his eyes and he's like, can you stop <laughs> looking at me? I feel like you're looking into my soul. I just have this thing I can do that. Like I just like see past everything and then I see everything unfold. Like when someone describes a situation that they're in or what they're feeling, it's like I can automatically just like see everything that unfolded to get them there. It's the weirdest fucking shit. I don't know if it's intuition. I don't know if it's clairvoyance, but I love it. It's fun, but it hurts my feelings a lot because like I said, I can see through people. But back on track with being realistic about someone. Let's say you meet someone and you feel all these things toward them. Like you're obsessed with them. You like them. You're like, oh my God, they're like everything you want. You enjoy being around them. Get realistic with the situation. What is going on currently? Like, I just met someone. I see a lot of things in them that I like. I'm interested in them. I care to get to know them, but I don't know them yet. Like, you feel all these strong emotions towards somebody. You still don't know who the fuck that is. I know that's weird, and it seems kind of like mean to say, but you can meet someone and feel something's there, yes. But to immediately be like, I love you, I care about you, you don't know them to care about them. You can care about their well-being. You can be interested in them. You can like things about them. You can appreciate things about them. But you're not just in love with them. You don't immediately just care about them. And they don't immediately just like have a grip on your heart. I know it feels like that sometimes. But I want to set your mind at ease from that. Like get realistic with the situation. You've just met vibes. All right. <laughs> like step one, what's the situation at hand? You met this person you feel strong feelings for. You feel like you appreciate a lot of things about them. You're attracted to them. You like them. You want to get to know them. You feel drawn to them. That's all fine things to communicate. Like, that's what's going on inside you. That's all the shit that's, like, running around in your brain and in your little heart. But getting clear with the situation at hand is going to help you kind of, like, get back in the moment and detach your brain from, like, going forward and, like, running with the fucking story of, like, oh, my God, what this could be. Because it's, like, if you just let yourself meet someone you meet them a couple of times whatever it is and then you automatically start assuming like oh my god we're gonna date we're gonna this we're gonna that and then you find out they're talking to somebody else it's like ah, stab in the heart bitch i know it i've been there like you can't assume shit so that's really what it does it's like getting clear on what the situation is and like speaking it to yourself of like i've just met this person i feel these flies cool it like knocks out all of your assumptions of how things are gonna go and it kind of removes your expectations of like What's going to come from this situation? Because if you immediately meet somebody and you like them a lot and you like convince yourself of a certain thing or something's going on and they don't behave accordingly, it's going to fuck with you. Like when I like somebody and I haven't said anything yet, but I really like somebody at a party or some shit, or like I meet someone out and I really, really like them and they don't know me yet and they're like talking to other people, they're floating around the party, they're doing whatever they want old me would have secretly been like what the fuck like pissed off like butt hurt that you're not like coming up to me like don't you know that i love you <laughs> i wish i was being fucking dramatic but i used to get attached to people quick but that's a big thing is just get in the reality of the situation what is actually going on right now not what could happen not what should happen because your expectations are going to get caught up into it too like you're not going to expect them to behave a certain way or do anything so it's going to keep you from feeling betrayed. Like, so just get clear what the fuck is going on right now. My next tip, tip number two, is once you already like are getting to know someone and you feel like you're getting attached very quickly, 
This is my go-to fucking tip to check myself. And I have one of these personally. And what I'm about to talk about is a boyfriend scoreboard. I literally have a fucking scoreboard for every guy that I meet that I might be interested in. I have an entire list of every single trait that I would have in my ideal partner. Like everything I want in a partner, I have, it's a literal like three or four page word document and it's long as fuck. And what I do with this document is every guy that I meet, I'll make them their own copy of it. And then I'll put, like it's in a table. So like everything that I want is listed here and then their name is at the top and then there's a blank check box on the side. Everything that they are, I'll check it off. Like I'll put an X in the thing that everything that they are. And having the scoreboard with like everything that I want in a person, when you feel like you like someone a lot or you feel like something's like going on very strong, you're like, oh my God, this is going to put you in the reality of who the fuck is in front of you and what you're dealing with because your emotions will misguide you. They will make you feel like you're up this person's ass, like obsessed with them more than you actually are or should be. So this is a good like reality check. So I literally will score each guy I'm potentially interested in against my scoreboard and I see how much you fill in. And I have a promise to myself, I will not trip over somebody who does not fill out the scoreboard. I'm not going to let myself get upset over them. I'm not going to let myself freak out because they're not what I want. I'll entertain it. I'll have fun with it. I'll see how much they fill it out. If they fill it out most of the way, eh, we're going to take some leeway. We're going to like go for the bitch. But I'm not fully going to let myself like freak out or like bug out over someone who doesn't at least fill in like 90% of my scoreboard because that's a lot of shit on there, girl. <laughs> But doing this will help you see the person in front of you because you're going to be convinced and like blinded by your emotions thinking that they're so great. But when you put them on paper next to everything you want in a partner, you're going to see, oh, fuck, like they don't actually match up as much as I thought. And it's going to kill some of that excitement, which is good because it's going to make you hesitate with feeling so attached to them. And I know that's kind of like fucked up and like, what's it called? Cynical? Is that the word? It just, it's kind of like putting a, like a negative Nelly. Like it's a, putting a damper on things when you do that. But it's a good reality check when you feel yourself getting attached too quick or you feel like you're like, <gasps> you're moving too fast or you feel too strongly. It's a good reality check because it's not being negative. It's being realistic. What the fuck's actually going on here? Because you can sit here and play in your emotions in the way that you feel all you want. It's going to fuck you up. All right. So put the motherfucker next to your scoreboard. Make a full list of everything you want in a partner and then score them against it. A boyfriend scoreboard or a girlfriend scoreboard or a they them scoreboard, whatever you're fucking into. Make a little scoreboard and score this person up against everything that you want in a partner. And the next tip I have about reality of something is where I'm going to talk about a situation I recently went through where I got a crush on a straight boy. <laughs> so after you face reality, Okay, you see what the situation is for what it is. You make a scoreboard. Even if you don't make the boyfriend scoreboard, whatever. Assess the situation and like tell yourself what is actually going on. Get in the reality of it. And then you have to assess, are we actually even compatible? Like what actually could come from this? Because I met someone a few weeks ago. And upon meeting him, like I was obsessed with him. I loved everything about his energy, his personality. He was fun as shit. He was cute. I was like, hell yeah. Like I was down with the get down. I was like, what the fuck? Like people like this don't like come across my path often. So it caught my attention a lot. Like I love the fuck out of this man from the moment I seen him. <laughs> so I felt this extreme and very intense interest in this dude. I was like, oh my God. Like I was so fucking excited. But I had to give myself a reality check with asking if we're actually even compatible because the motherfucker was straight. Number one. Number two, he does not live in this country. So with those two things, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? You know, like you got to get in the reality and see if you're actually compatible. Because one, you're straight. You're not interested in me. And two, you do not fucking live in this country like they were visiting. Like being realistic, where do I actually think this will go? Bitch, it's going to stop here. It's not fucking going nowhere. But the way I used to be is I would still get hopeful. I would still get excited. I would allow myself to like start think I had feelings for this person and like get so involved and then like break my own heart when I face the reality that he was fucking straight. Like, girl, face that shit at the beginning and save yourself. Like, get your emotions in check 
and like reel it in. Like you have to accept things are what they are. You really just have to accept the situation for what it is and acknowledge it up front. Because if you just feel like intensely towards someone and you just put blinders on and you don't wanna face reality and you just go forward into it, one day you're gonna to get too far down the line involved emotionally and then you're gonna take those blinders off and you're gonna to have to face the reality of like the motherfucker straight and don't live here. And then it's gonna feel like a fucking dagger through your chest because you're like, ah, like it's gonna fucking hurt 10 times worse. It's just a matter of when do you wanna face the reality of it? Do you wanna do it after you're already emotionally invested or do you wanna go ahead and fucking rip the bandaid off in the beginning and face it for what it is so that you don't get hurt? And I'm not saying this is like an avoidant thing. It's just a realistic thing. Like don't be scared to like people and scared to like, fall in love and stuff. I've never been in love, so don't fucking ask me about that. This is not an avoidance thing. This is just a reality thing because you can't let your emotions run wild. Like you can't just like put your blinders on and like go with shit. It's gonna hurt you and it's not gonna lead to anything good. Trust me, been there, done that plenty of times. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and another way I kind of help myself with this process of like accepting what it is and like accepting the compatibility is like play the tape forward. Play the tape forward of the situation with this person. What the fuck is it going to turn into? Like, think into the future. Not about you with them, okay? Not you together, you separate. Like, just look at the situation and play the tape forward. Add time to it. What is the likely possibility, like, going to come out of it? And I'm someone that, like, even if this motherfucker, like, questioned his sexuality and turned out to be gay and wanted to come out, I'm not willing to get with someone who is freshly out. You gotta go fuck around and explore and go get in touch with yourself and do all that. I'm not being no one's fucking like hand holder and like leading them through this shit. They need to go experience things and then want to settle down for a relationship. Like to live your life in hiding with your sexuality and then you finally get the freedom to explore it and expect to just jump into a relationship with someone is unrealistic. I'm not willing to take that chance, depends. Because I don't ever know who's going to come across my path. And if you write one, motherfucker, I'll do it. But I will fucking hit you. <laughs> but playing the tape forward, even if he did come out, I wouldn't want to go for it. Like, you need to go do your shit and explore and experience things so that you know what you want in a relationship, one. And two, know what your type is. Know what you're into sexually. you got to go play around. you got to go try all that out. And then you can come back. We're not compatible. It's not going to go nowhere. So adding time to the situation and adding like other possibilities. I saw that in reality, it's not gonna work. There's like not really any chance for it to. So even if he is straight, it ain't gonna work. Even if he is gay, I'm not into that. I'm not gonna go down that road with you if you're just discovering your sexuality. Like I'm too grown for that shit. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense or not. Like, is it that I'm grown or is it just that I fucking know better? I don't know. So my next tip with not getting attached to someone that you've just met, like this is someone that you've met recently or you don't know that well, right there. You don't know them that well. You don't fucking know them. So get to know them. Don't just start assuming that they like you as much as you do. Don't just start assuming that you're compatible. Like if I meet a dude and he's gay and he's my type and I'm his type and it's like, great, okay. There's still so much to explore about each other to see if we're actually compatible. What are you like emotionally? What do you like physically? What do you like sexually? There's so much to discover. There's so many things that can make you incompatible besides just like sex, sexuality, and like physical appearance. There's so much more that you have to discover about a person. Like I, if you have like some weird quirks or if you snore, no, it's not happening. I'm not sleeping with earplugs and I'm not dealing with no in my fucking ear when I'm sleeping. My sleep is very important to me. Don't fuck with it. <laughs> but there's so many different aspects you need to assess and evaluate if you actually are gonna work out with this person. So if you're getting to know someone, you have to understand you have to get to know them first. Like, you, they're a fucking stranger. You have to realize that. I don't care how strongly you feel about someone, they're still a fucking stranger, they're still someone you have to learn. Like my best friend Alyssa, I met her when I first moved to Houston, and from the moment that we fucking met, it was like me, her, and my friend Randy. It's like we're the little trio. Like we met, and we all meshed so well, so fucking fast. Like we became so close and we were so comfortable after just spending like 10 minutes together. It was like I knew them my whole fucking life. Like my nipples are hard and I have the chills talking about it because it freaks me the fuck out. But we're so close, so fast, and we felt so comfortable with each other so fast. And that's something I hadn't experienced before. And my like 
red flags and like my trust issues were not flaring up. Like typically they do. So it was very weird to me that I felt so trusting of these people I had literally known for 24 hours. It was the strangest fucking experience, but we're all very tight today. Like they're my two best friends. I have a lot of other close friends, but like the closeness shit that happened, why y'all moving the trash can right now? Why y'all gotta move the trash can right fucking now? I'm making a podcast. Thank you for doing your job. It just wasn't a convenient time for me. Okay, back to my fucking little thing. I felt so close to these people so fast, but I had to remind myself, Leo, yes, you're friends with them. Yes, you feel very close with them and very comfortable with them. And you guys work together so well. All your energies blend. Like, they're socially aware. They're emotionally aware. Like, they just fucking get it. And I had to remind myself, yes, you feel this way toward them, but at the same time, you don't fucking know them. Though I talk about testing people a lot, I test everybody. Like I test a lot of different things. <laughs> I do things to test if people are gonna steal from me. I do things to test their intentions. I do things to test what type of person they are and their character. Like I have all kinds of tests and I'll probably do an episode about like ways that I test people because y'all need to start doing it. But I still have to get to know Randy and Alyssa. Like I have to get to know them even though I feel like so close to them so fast. And the same thing happened with my friend David. It was fucking strange. So that's what I'm saying. You still have to protect yourself and watch your own fucking ass and just understand you have to get to know this person. I don't care how good you feel about them. You don't fucking know them, all right? And being too trusting and being too like hopeful and having too good of a heart will fuck you. It will. I wish that wasn't true, but I have too many experiences of giving people the benefit of the doubt and they fuck me over. I have no experience of giving someone the benefit of the doubt and them doing me right. So I don't know if that's my own situation and my own experiences and my own like limiting shit and like my perception of the thing, but you have to watch your own fucking ass and I don't care how good you feel about somebody. You have to get to know them first. I'm just gonna leave it there because if you haven't had that experience, I'm happy for you and I don't wanna speak like fear into you, but I will speak reality at you of like you don't know people regardless how good you feel about them or how much you feel like you know them because I felt like I knew these motherfuckers my whole life, but I didn't. And I had to remind myself of that, of like, okay, Leo, you got the feelings, but you have to have the logic too. You have to CYA, cover your ass. And this whole get to know them situation applies to people that you've also already known. So like, let's say you've been friends with someone for a while and you guys are pursuing a relationship or you're pursuing something more than a friendship. <laughs> who you know of them is who they are as a friend. You don't know who they are in a relationship. You don't know how they are in a relationship. So that's another thing you have to check yourself on. You might know this person, but this is a whole nother side you're gonna have to get to learn if you're gonna take it farther than a friendship. You have to get to know who they are in a relationship, how they're gonna treat you, what's gonna change, what's gonna shift. They're a whole different fucking person. So I want you to look at it like that. So you don't go into it thinking of like certain expectations you have of them as a friend and then throw it into the relationship because it might set you up for disappointment. But you have to get to know people in the new role. So like if you have a friend that you're switching to a relationship, you have to take on the attitude of like, I'm getting to know this new side of you. I'm getting to know what it's like to experience you in this way. So that's another reminder. I don't care how long you've been friends with someone, you have to get to know them in a relationship also. So just keep your eyes open with that and like remind yourself, you have to get to know them so you're not as attached as you feel. And with me saying you're not as attached as you feel, bitch, look at the time. Look at the fucking time <laughs> of how long you've known this person. Like when I met Randy and Alyssa and we hung out for like the first weekend together, I knew them two days. Okay. And I felt so strongly connected to them. And I was like, oh my God, like if I lost them, I'd be sad. But if I lost them, would I be that fucked up and that damaged by it? No, girl. I knew them for two fucking days. Luckily, we're still friends. We're still friends. We're all very close. We're all very good. But my point is like the time thing. You have to like check yourself. Like how long have you actually known them? How long have you actually had a crush on them? Like look at the shit like for real. Like be fucking for real. B-F-F-R. <laughs> Leo, what the fuck? So my next tip for not getting too attached too quick is do not tie anything up with this person. Like make their ability to leave your life seamless and easy 
for a good while. I want to say like six months, but I know people are going to freak the fuck out if I say that. But like, I'm not saying do this as like an avoidant attachment style thing. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> but do this to protect your own ass and like to cover your own bases. Like don't get too enmeshed and like legally associated and like involved like don't be making no fucking commitments of like getting a house together getting married signing a fucking lease together don't mesh anything that's gonna bind them to you and make shit difficult if you guys do agree to leave because like i said you're still getting to know each other you still have to assess so many things if you're compatible or not so if you've committed to a fucking lease and you're going to move in together and you've moved into an apartment after three months that's how the gays work we, we be moving fast but if you commit to all that and then you realize, okay, this person's not actually like who I thought they was, or I'm not actually as into them as I thought, or we're not compatible, what you gonna do now, bitch? Now leaving is gonna be 10 times harder. So I'd say give it a minute. You'll know when, because a situation, you won't be making a decision off of your emotion, you'll be making a decision off of logic. And those are the decisions to make. Like, if you've known someone for a month, don't fucking buy a house with them. Unless it's a sugar daddy and they're putting it in your name. Let them buy you the house. <laughs> but don't fucking go get yourself, like, tied up with people too quick. That's going to make you feel a lot more attached a lot quicker. Because when you move quicker and you do a lot of important things, it makes you feel more attached. Like, you're setting this foundation of, like, security and stability with a motherfucker you barely know. That's going to trick your brain into thinking you're way more attached and you care about them way more than you think. So slow it down, bitch. Hold the horse. Okay, I'm one to talk though, because <laughs> I like to move quick, but I'm very certain and sure, and I know how to judge people's character and like, you know, well, it's not about me. It's really fucking not. Let me shut up. But let me just reiterate my point. Make it as easy as possible for you to walk away for at least the first like six months, three or four if you can, bitch. Okay, but you still don't know someone that well. Like you have to see a lot about a person to decide that you actually know them. So... Don't get involved with them. Don't do shit too quick that's going to bind you to them. Allow for the potential of you guys splitting to be as easy as possible. Just remember me saying that for like a little bit. So the next thing I want to talk about is before you do something for the person that you like, you got to cut all the strings that you have attached to it. Like you don't want to do something for someone with hidden expectations or hidden hopes or like anything like that. So a way to weed that out is ask yourself before you buy them a gift, before you book a trip with them, before you do anything for them or like with them, ask yourself, if we were to split up and break up after this, would I still feel comfortable doing it? And that's how you'll know if you actually want to do something and if you feel comfortable doing it. Because a lot of people only like to do shit with the thought of like, oh, I'm investing in the relationship. But you have to see... Are you willing to invest in the person, not the relationship? Don't do anything for them if you're not willing to do it for them and their well-being and their happiness. Don't invest shit or do shit if you wouldn't be comfortable with them still having it if they walk away or if you guys split up. Like that's just a thing to protect you and also to protect you from doing things that will lead you to feeling betrayed. Because if you do shit expecting like you guys stay together and then you don't, you're going to be pissy. So... That's a good way to know, like, if you should or shouldn't do something. Am I still comfortable doing it even if we break up? Am I still comfortable with investing this energy, time, money, gift, whatever it is, into this person, even if I don't get to share it with them? And that'll bring you a lot of clarity if you should do something or not. Oh, God. Okay, this next one's a little controversial. I personally can't do this. <laughs> but what I'm going to say is don't cut off all of your options. Like, play the field a little. Like, if you find someone that you like and you go on a first date and it goes good, like, don't immediately cut off everybody else that you're talking to or interested in because it's going to help you not, like, fixate on them. Like, if you meet this one person and everything goes good for, like, the beginning and you're just like, oh, you have nothing else going on, you're just going to be fixated on them and you're going to put all of your hope and effort into, like, making that work. And if it doesn't work, it's going to feel a lot more devastating. But I personally cannot do this. I don't talk to people like that. If I find someone I'm interested in, I'm 100% there. I don't like to split my focus and my attention. But a lot of people like to date around. So if you're someone that's comfortable with like dating around and having a lot of options, do it until it gets to a point where you're ready and certain. Like, okay, this is the person. Then cut everybody else off. Don't do anything disrespectful. But if you're not the type like me to have a lot of options at once, 
I want you to stay fucking busy. And that's my next tip is stay busy with what you're doing in your life. Like keep yourself and your goals, your priority, work on your own shit. Go to your fucking job. Do what you need to do for you. Take care of yourself. Keep going with your fitness goals. Keep going with whatever goals you have, whatever you like to do. Stay consistent with it and keep doing it. Like maybe do a little bit more because when you find someone that you're really interested in, if you hyper fixate on them, every little move they make is going to fucking hurt. It's going to like hurt your little heart. Like God forbid they don't answer your text fast enough or like they don't answer your text all day because they got busy. It's like, oh my God, what have I done wrong? Like I get it. I get it, bitch. I was like that. So staying busy and staying in your own shit is going to allow you to not like hyper fixate on every move that they make. Like every little action that they do, if you don't have anything going on for yourself and anything that you're doing, all you have to do is sit here and overanalyze everything. And it will hurt the fuck out of you if you do it. Stay busy with your own shit. Don't overanalyze every text, every move, every everything. Like by being busy, you have less effort to shove into them and like watching every move that they make. And like how they might not like you. And then, oh, they do like me. And then they don't like me. It's like, don't go through all that mental fucking turmoil. Stay consistent with what you're doing. Stay busy. Allow yourself to have other things to focus on and not just them. It's totally fine to be excited by them. It's totally fine to go for them and like put your effort and energy into them. But like have other shit you're doing that with also. So you don't, one, lose yourself. And two, hyper fixate and get hurt by every little fucking like slight change in behavior. And my last tip, my last little point I want to make is enjoy liking someone and enjoy the heartbreak of it. Enjoy getting your feelings hurt, bitch, because nothing makes me thrive more than getting my feelings hurt. (laughs) Like when I like someone, I get like a boost of energy to be better, to do better, to look better, to get more serious about myself, to improve myself more. Like I get that nice boost and like rush and inspiration. So enjoy that. Like it's very rare that I find somebody I like. But when I do, I feel so good. So enjoy that while you've got it. Like tap into it. Use it to your advantage. Use it to level yourself up. Like enjoy having someone there. Enjoy having someone that you're interested by and that you're like enamored by and that you just want to look at and like touch and squeeze and hug. Ah, Like it's so fun. So just enjoy that aspect of it. And then also enjoy the fucking heartbreak. Enjoy that shit going south. Enjoy losing them. Because everything that you... Losing that person is going to give you clarity about everything you want in the next one. So even if you lose one, you gain insight about what you truly want out of a person. And like, it's going to, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good learning moment, but enjoy the heartbreak because that'll give you that motivation of like finding the next one and like leveling yourself up and improving yourself. Like be a selfish prick like I am, like use it to your advantage (laughs) because I love some emotional like fucking willpower. Like when I'm upset or sad and I go work out or like I start working on something, I'd be, I'd be heartbroken, like getting so much done, like fucking opening new businesses and shit and fucking like working out like hard as hell because I'm like lifting out of pure emotion, like put on some Lana Del Rey and fucking cry, put on a little Ethel Kane and fucking just like rage. Like that's the best shit. So literally just enjoy the process of it, even if it doesn't go anywhere. Like with the boy that was straight that didn't live here, like I just enjoyed being in his company and just, I enjoyed the fact that I liked him. Like I just enjoyed that sensation of what it's like to be enamored with someone. And then it ended like homie left and I'm fucking on my own shit now. Like it just enjoy that feeling when you've got it. Cause it's nice. Okay. So now let's jump into what would Leo do? So that's where you guys write in and ask me for advice on your situations about what I would do if I was you. So the first one is how can you stay consistent in the gym when your family doesn't support you. So what I had to understand when I started getting into fitness is other people are not going to get it. Your family's not going to understand and they don't have to. People do not have to understand what you're doing for you to do it. People do not have to support you for you to do what you want to do. If you have a goal, don't expect people to understand. Don't expect people to support you. It's nice to have support, but if someone doesn't want to support you, don't try and force them to. You don't need support and you don't need people to understand for you to do what you want to do. So what I will say is set boundaries around what your goal is. So if you have like a fitness goal, like you're talking about, if you have a certain time you're going to go to the gym or going to the gym is a non-negotiable for you, for you to get to where you want to go, 
make it clear that like you have a boundary around I will be spending this time every day at the gym on holidays. If I decide to go to the gym, I'm going to go early or later so I can still spend time with everyone. I used to do that. Like I was in the gym every fucking holiday because my family didn't really like celebrate holidays, but I didn't give a fuck. Like even if it was someone's birthday, like bitch, I'm still going to the fucking gym. I'm still doing my own shit on my own birthday. I go to the goddamn gym. So just set boundaries around what you're going to do. So if working out is like something that you want to do, set a boundary around it. You're going to do it. It's not up for fucking discussion. You have a goal. You're going to work toward it. Same with eating and diet. If you have a certain goal for like how you want to start eating, set that boundary, make it a non-negotiable. Like people will offer you food. You don't have to take it. You don't have to eat what everybody else is eating. And I'm Albanian. So I know what that fucking shit is like. Like my parents love to try and force feed me. My cousins be eating like crazy and they be, do you want some? Eat some? Like, come on, come on. Like they give you a guilt trip for like not eating. Like I love it. I appreciate them. But you have to have self-discipline and self-control to say no. You can politely say, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm eating clean right now. Whatever it is. And after you say it a few times, they're going to fucking get it. And they're going to shut the fuck up and stop offering you shit. Because my friends be offering me cookies all the time. And I'm like, I can't do it. But that's it. Just set boundaries around what you're doing. And don't ask for people to support you. Tell people you'd like their support. Sure. But you don't need their support. You're going to do it regardless. All you need people to do is respect your boundaries and not give you shit. So they don't have to support you, but they can shut the fuck up and let you do what you want to do. You're not hurting them. You're not ruining anything for them. You're not making their life difficult. You're doing your own shit. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm fucking proud of you. And it's going to be difficult, but you got this shit. Okay. I've been through the same thing. Like at 12 years old, I started getting into like dieting a little bit. And then 14, I started like P90X and like working out. Like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but like my family was trying to feed me certain shit. And I'm like, no, I'm going to have a salad. Like I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but I got a lot of like judgment from everyone around me, but I still just did it anyways because I was the one that had to be fat, not them. So I wanted to fix it. (laughs) And another thing with that, and then I'm going to shut up and move to the next one, is when you are around people who are not doing what you're doing, they're going to make you feel weird as fuck for it. So me with my diet and exercise, I've always felt weird and like other people just don't get it until I started hanging out with people and being friends with people who get it. Like all of my friends now are into fitness. They're all into like meal plans, working out, dieting. Like they're all about that shit. And I don't feel weird at all. And like when I go to their houses, I can actually eat shit when I'm there because it's all healthy shit. It's all the same shit that I eat. Like as soon as you get around people who are doing the same thing, you'll feel supported. You'll feel understood. They'll get it. But people that are not doing it, you can't expect to feel like they get it or understand or are going to support you. So That's all I'm going to say on that. It does get easier. I promise. So our next situation is another one about like a fitnessy lifestyle. Someone said, how do I eat on my meal plan and not miss going out to eat with friends and family? That's something that I have to deal with a lot because like everything is about going out to eat. Like anytime you're going to hang out with someone, it's like, oh, let's go get food. Let's go get drinks. Let's go this. Let's go that. It's like everybody has to be eating something all the time. And when you're on a meal plan, it's very hard to do that. So I'll give you the couple of tips that I use. One is like if I go to my friend's house to hang out, I'll take a meal with me so I can just eat it when I'm there. Another thing that I do is I'll eat before I go hang out with people. Or if my friends invite me to dinner, I'll eat before dinner so that I have my meal in and I don't have to worry about fucking it up. And then I'll go to dinner with them and I'll just like get a water or like get a Diet Coke or whatever the fuck and just hang out. Like I'm there to share the experience. I'm there in the atmosphere. We get to hang out. It's like you don't have to eat just because you're at a restaurant. People might look at you like you're fucking weird, but fuck up. Let them mind their own goddamn business. Like, you can go still hang out with people and be around them and not, like, fuck up your goals. But another thing that I do with going out to eat, because it is a little weird to, like, sit there and just, like, not eat. (laughs) So something that I'll do, and I do this all the time. You can ask anyone that fucking hangs out with me. I will go eat at a restaurant with a friend, but I'll take two protein bars with me because that's 40 grams of protein. So I'll literally go to the restaurant and I'll eat the protein bars like at the restaurant. And I don't give a fuck that people look at me. I don't give a fuck that people think it's weird. Yeah, I bring my goddamn protein bars to the restaurant. Leave me alone. But I'll order a salad and I'll get like whatever salad that they have. But I will get this dressing on the side. And I usually ask if they have like oil and vinegar. And I get that on the side because vinegar has zero calories. I don't put the oil on it, but I'll put vinegar on it. But I get a salad with no dressing, no croutons, no cheese. It's literally just a plate of fucking vegetables if you do that. And then I'll put vinegar on it. 
and then like a little salt and pepper, whatever I want. And I'll eat my protein bars. And like, I get the experience of going out with people, hanging out, getting to be in like the restaurant atmosphere because I love a restaurant. But I don't have to fuck up my goals. Like I still get to go and eat something and I still get to like stay on track with everything. There's a way to balance it, I promise. People might think it's a little fucking weird, but who gives a shit? Because you're the one you have to answer to. You're the one that has the goals. And your goals don't give a fuck about who's judging the goals. It's like you have to do what it takes to get there. So do it. Even if people think you're a little wacko. Because bitch, see something, say something. Yeah, I'm eating protein bars and a salad. Who gives a fuck? (laughs) Okay, so the last situation for what would Leo do is this person is dealing with phone addiction. And when they're studying, like they can't get on their phone. Like if something gets hard or they get bored, they just get on their phone. And they get on their phone non-fucking-stop. And they can't like get off of it. And it's fucking with every aspect of their life. So there's a whole emotional side you can go touch on with addiction and like phone addiction and distraction from like something that you feel. I get it. But it sounds like you just need more self-control and like things to navigate having more discipline around it. So I'm going to give you those. If you're interested in learning about the emotional side of addiction, look it up. (laughs) I would do a video about it, but like I don't want to touch on that subject. Like addiction is like so touchy and people are going to fucking try and attack me for it. But my tip for studying, if you're trying to study or do schoolwork and you keep getting on your phone, babe, put your phone in another fucking room while you study. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're literally going to have times. Like when I used to have to study, I would have all my books and shit in front of me, my laptop. And then I would have like my phone usually sitting here. And once I would start putting my phone in another room, I would catch myself like reaching for my phone and it wasn't there. Like my body was just so used to being in the habit of doing it. You're going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel weird. But as you do it more, your brain's going to start to associate study time. Your phone's not in the fucking room and you'll allow yourself to focus. But if you have your computer in front of you too, watch it, bitch. Don't be playing on other shit. You need to fucking study. But another idea for like social media addiction on the phone is you can set time limits on your apps. So you can set a certain amount of time that you're allowed to like be on social media apps throughout the day. So you can set like one hour, two hours, five hours, whatever you want to set it as. Like, let's say you've been on Instagram for like two hours today and your time limit is two hours. It's then going to lock all of your other social media apps or whatever ones that you add into the restriction. And every time you go to open the app, it's going to come up with a screen with like a little timer on it and be like, you've exceeded your screen time for the day. You can click OK and it will close it or you can click ignore and it will let you open the app. And what I found that to be so useful for is... A lot of the times when you're on your phone, you'll just click an app like out of habit, but that screen puts a buffer and it puts like one step extra in front of your habit and your pattern of like just clicking onto Instagram on your phone. It's like if you ever move shit around on your phone, move the apps around, your brain's going to naturally just click where Instagram was or click where TikTok was just by habit. So having that screen flash up with the screen time, it like breaks that moment of like, okay, that was just autopilot and it puts you like, okay, hang on. But even if you want to ignore the time limit and get on the app anyways, I want you to realize and remind yourself when you see that screen and you click ignore, I'm choosing this right now. Like put yourself in a place of power whether you choose it or not. That's my same idea with binge eating. Put the shit in front of you and choose it. Don't just be like, oh, I'm so powerless to my emotions. Eh." Like don't take an unempowered action. Reminding yourself that you're in control puts you in a place of power and you're free to choose it if you want, but you get to avoid that guilt. It'll also make you more accountable and disciplined because if you look at it like, okay, here's my screen time limit. I've already exceeded what I've wanted to be on for the day. I can choose to do it or I can choose not to. You're not just powerless to it. Like, oh, I just can't stop scrolling. It's like, nah, bitch, you chose it. So what now? Like, why are you going to complain when your actions are right in front of you of why you're not getting the results that you want? You see? Another tip I have for social media addiction and like spending too much time on it and just scrolling is unfollow accounts that you don't fucking like and unfollow accounts that just distract you for no fucking reason. Like I follow a lot of quote pages and I follow a lot of people that are like my friends and influencers that I like. Sure. But I unfollowed a lot of pages that was just like mindless bullshit. Like I love a meme though. I'd be having tons of memes, but I'm able to like control myself. So I'd say if you feel like you can't, unfollow a lot of pages that is just mindless distraction if it's not like a motivation thing a quote or like something that's going to help you feel better then don't watch it don't like 
have everything that you enjoy so much readily available to you. Like just kind of like cut back on it because you'll start opening your phone and be like, eh, I'm bored. And then you'll close it. And then you have to find something else to do. And that's my next tip is if you're going to set a time limit for how much you can be on your phone, do not just expect yourself to quit doing something without something else to like fill it in or take up your attention. Because if you're used to spending it on social media and then you have nothing to do now and you're just sitting here like expecting yourself to be fine with it, you're most likely going to jump back into it. So have something else planned that you want to do. Get busy with something else. I don't want to say read because that's so fucking cliche. But like go read, go do something like Go watch a different type of YouTube video. Go watch some self-development shit. Like, go watch something that is going to help you with what you're doing and not just be mindless social media because you can use social media to learn things. Like, there's certain YouTube videos where while I'm eating, I love to watch a YouTube video. Every fucking meal of the day, I like to have a YouTube video and I like to watch it when I eat. I've been like that since I can remember since I'm little. I grew up on YouTube. But, oh my God, I'm on YouTube now. Hey, if you're eating... (laughs) But when I'm watching videos on YouTube, sometimes I like like mindless shit. And then sometimes I like things that are like business related or like coaching related or like psychology related. And I'll allow myself to watch these videos and I don't beat myself up mentally because I'm learning something from them. So I still get to be on social media and like be entertained, but it's not useless, like mindless social media. So that's another thing that I would suggest. But also give yourself something else to do or watch and like something else to do with your time, like studying or like whatever you need to fucking get done. Go to the gym, go on a goddamn walk, listen to some music. I don't know. Like give yourself something else to do to occupy your time because you have a known way of filling like voids and like empty time slots in your day. So if you just remove that, you're going to be faced with what you're running from. So have something else that's like more productive or more healthy that will help you to do that's all i got for what would leo do if you want to be featured on next week's episode or a future episode you can submit your situation or whatever you need advice on in the description below i have a link of like the what would leo do submissions you just click it it's completely anonymous you just type your situation and send it in and i have it all in one spot so i can just like run through them also the link to the facebook community that i made for all of us will be in the description so go join that right now don't forget go fucking join it even if you don't need advice right now like go play in it go post something go post the hot If you found this episode useful, send it to somebody. Send it to a friend that you think could benefit. Or, like, share it to your story. I like Instagram stories because, like, you guys share it and then I get to share it on mine. It's so cute. But I also have a donations page set up for this podcast. So if you want to support me and help me keep going with this bitch, drop a little donation. The link's in the description also. I have a couple more things to plug. One is my social media. So go follow me. TikTok and Instagram and all that. I'll put that in the description too. And my accountability templates, like the worksheets that I use to stay disciplined and accountable, I'll also link those in the description where you can download those and get a copy and see how I'm able to be so disciplined and accountable and get so much shit done. Last thing, if you want to download my app, it's called Positive Focus. It will send you positive notifications to your phone all day long. Nice little things that you need to hear, like boost your mood, shift your perspective from like what's going wrong to like Things that will make you feel better, like what's positive, positive focus, you see? It's like a positive mindset shift with like no notifications. Real easy. And I also have journal prompts in there. So like it's shadow work journal prompts, but also just like journal prompts to help you like process things and get to the root of like what's going on. So the link to download that will be in the description also. It's available for iPhones and Androids. So both of those links are down below. And that's all I've got for this episode. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment with your feedback or like DM me on Instagram because I love to get you guys' little messages. I love to hear what you guys have to say. But join the Facebook community, goddammit. And I look forward to talking to you next Sunday.